to a very special episode of my Let's Build series. This is episode 25. I cannot believe we've made it this far, everyone. This is the official world tour and the first world download of my survival world so far. And this is also the longest series that I've ever had on this channel. So if you are new here and want to catch up and see what we've done, Welcome, I hope you enjoy the tour and enjoy seeing what we've done so far. And for those of you who have been following along for all 24 episodes so far, thank you so much for all the inspiration and motivation. I really hope that you enjoy exploring the download as much as I enjoyed making it with you guys. So this point that I'm standing on right now is exactly where we spawned in on this world. And this place looked so different 25 episodes ago. We have changed so much about the land around here. The theme that we're going for with this build is sort of an aquatic, tropical, paradise-like palace. This is only the first layer of the palace. We have plans for another once this tower extends all the way up into the sky like it is supposed to. Let's begin the tour by swimming over here. This sandcastle that you see on the beach right here, this is our starter house. This is where we built in the first episode and set up our base. We set up our base right here in the first episode to be safe from all those scary phantoms. Do I actually have anything in here? Oh, some kelp and some potatoes. <laughs> Very useful. So this used to be my bedroom up here, and it would give me a good view of what's around. Not quite as good of a view now, I must admit. Let's head over to the entrance of the palace so we can enter properly. Here is the main entrance of our palace. So the entire idea that we're going for with this palace is the underwater and above ground areas are connected in sort of a human on the land and mermaid in the water type of relationship. So we have these entranceway staircases that come up and we enter into the grand hall of our palace. At the moment, this place is very, very heavily under construction, but we have placed so many blocks in this so far. Thousands and thousands of dark prismarine terracotta and birch. The circle you see in the center will eventually be a massive aquarium going all the way up the length of our tower. On each side here, we have windows as well as a balcony. This is something that we worked on very recently and I'm definitely enjoying the view so far. In terms of the view and what it will be in the future, this sandcastle is eventually going to move over to that island. Our mob farm will be under that island in the spawn chunks, and this island will turn into a sandcastle village. Coming down here, we've got this board here. This is our idea board. So if we have anything that we know that we need to get done relatively soon, I put it on this board so that we can keep everything nice and organized and in order. This way, we've got one of the very first things that we ever walked on. This bridge takes us to our gorgeous enchantment tower. This enchantment tower was one of the very first structures next to our little sandcastle starter house in the very first episodes. The details on this are basically exactly how we're going to be detailing the rest of the palace, so it is leading the way effectively. When we come inside, we have this beautiful area to do some enchanting with an aquarium and underneath it. Down the spiral staircase, we can spiral all the way around this gorgeous aquarium. The fish inside here are all named after viewers and commenters of this series. So that is super exciting. If you dive into this aquarium, you can see each and every fish has a name. And that is the case for all of the aquariums. Through here, we've got our underwater tunnel that gives us a fantastic view of the ocean life. I love this view. It's so amazing. I can't wait to add even more underwater tunnels around. Coming in here, we've got my general work area. So this is where I smelt up my sand right here. Generally just some iron. I've got lots of iron. I went mining recently. This is where all of our precious goods are, like diamonds, iron, lapis, anything that we could need. I'll let you guys explore the chests yourself. It's pretty standard storage room stuff. One of our beginner sources of food was actually chicken, so we've got a chicken cooker in here. These entranceways are elevators. This one takes you up, and that's the one where you enter in next to our entrance up there, if you don't want to take the staircase. Through here, we have two more aquariums, one that is themed like a desert, and the other one has a gorgeous coral cherry blossom themed tree. 
I personally love the theme of this one and I want to do more like that somewhere else in the palettes. I think this area might be one of my absolute favorites in the world currently. Everything just feels so clean and connected together and it truly feels like you're underwater the entire time you're here. The best thing that I like is that it is connected to our underwater ravine. Our underwater ravine is sort of a mermaid themed village. It's got lots of colorful corals and inside this village, we're gonna have lots of different houses. These houses will each have different function. For example, this one right now is our slime farm and our cactus farm. Just some small little farms to get us going. Because this is a single player world, I'm not worried about mass producing it. This is actually way more slime than we're ever going to need. We're going to have a lot more mini farms in this ravine and end up cleaning it up quite a lot eventually. For example, through here, I've got some space cleared out where I want to move our cows and put our wheat, carrot, potato, beetroot, etc. all in this room. It should fit quite fine. You'll notice through the top here, we've got a glass flooring. This is so that from our little bulletin staircase area up in the palace, we can actually see down into our lovely ravine. You may notice we also have night vision and water breathing down here. That is because at the end of here, there is a beautiful tree. This coral and prismarine tree houses our conduit. Our conduit is right in there. There's lots of ruins and light posts around here, and I definitely want to extend on this even more as well. But I love the idea of this magical tree with the ruined structures around. Very atmospheric, if I do say so myself. All right, it looks like it's nighttime and this place is very, very dangerous at night. So I'm going to get a little sleep. Because we haven't yet got our mob farm, any place that is dark on this palace spawns mobs instantly and all of our roofs are dark. So that is not good news for us. Let's explore down here. This long hallway is pretty empty right now, but this is going to be where the bulk of our interior is. This room is sort of a grand entranceway, so it's very open concept. It's gonna have lots of high ceilings and big chandeliers. Whereas in here, we have a lot more of our functional rooms, eventually. Down here, we actually have our mine shaft where a zombie is apparently dying somewhere. So this has some storage for some cobble because our storage room was overflowing. And it also serves as the entrance to our mine, the entrance to our secret bunker, and less secretively, it's a nice place to store wine and ale that would be needed in the palace. I very much enjoy this room. I think the granite pillars pull everything together so wonderfully. We flick this lever, the secret door opens, and we enter into where it will eventually be a bunker. Down behind our barrels here, we have the entrance to our mine. This is where I do all my mining at the moment. Oh dear. <laughs> it's really the only spot that I currently need. I haven't mined that out nearly enough. In the middle of this long hallway, we have another doorway. This doorway is directly in the center of the palace and it'll have another pathway that leads into a staircase that goes into the ocean on this side. This is going to be our gardens. I want to have lots of beautiful fountains and trees, maybe statues, flowers, anything that you could imagine that would belong in a garden, I want to have here. I really want it to be full of life and beautiful. At the very end of our palace down here, where it's the absolute least complete for sure, uh, we have a lot of work to do, but I want this to, in some way, be sort of a boating area. So I want boats to be able to come in at least to this far, and maybe have some sort of dry dock area. We haven't quite decided yet, but I am positive the inspiration will come once we finish up these areas. We have a lot of work to do, after all. Up above our main floor up here, we have a little loft area. I haven't decided exactly what's going to go up there yet, but I'm thinking this will probably be the throne room because it has the absolute best view of the gardens, the enchantment tower, the village, as well as a great view over the main hall here. There will be several floors in this palace, so this will eventually be very divided up. We're going to be working on the interior in an episode very, very soon. Let's go for a little flight. I think it is important to see the entire palace from a bird's eye view because that definitely gives you a better idea for the scale. Let's turn around and there it is. So we're lacking a lot of detail right now because the way I like to build is basically block everything in and then do the detail afterwards. 
I think this is going to be much easier motivationally because we've already done a lot of the work mass grinding out all of these blocks and placing them all in. The detail really is the fun part. And there it is, the palace. I love this view. It's so fun to fly around. We're definitely going to need to create some elytra landing spots around here somewhere. Of course, out in our front entrance, you can't miss it, our beautiful mermaid statue stands tall, holding her little pearl in a shell. I absolutely love this structure, and I think the statue adds so much to the area to help with the theme. Organics are always just so lovely, and although it was a, quite a challenge in survival mode, it was definitely worth it. Now that we've explored the main areas of our gorgeous aquatic palace, it's time to move on to the other areas of this world. Although this is our main base and we will not have another giant palace anywhere else in this world, we do have some other projects that I've been working on. The two most important ones are this way. If you go exactly this way, so southeast in this direction, you will hit our squid farm. And if you go straight south, you will hit our island with our guardian farm. These two structures are super important because we are using so much prismarine in this build as well as dark prismarine. So of course we would need a lot of squid as well as a lot of prismarine shards. I'm going to save you guys the journey and uh, get on my way there. All right, here it is. Our guardian farm island has officially come into view. So we definitely went with quite a tropical island feel here. And although the guardian farm itself is not much to look at, I think we've hidden it well by decorating this gorgeous island to go with it. I've done some of the terraforming along the sides and created some palm trees to give a nice tropical look, and then went with sort of a modern lighthouse with some prismarine accents, of course, and some docks for us to land our boat at. Once we are on shore, there's a little camp out here where I was still doing some building, and we get a good view of the actual guardian farm with, oh my goodness, lots of guardians spawning. This is a fantastic place to get prismarine. I am so glad I built it. It has saved me so much time. We come down the spiral staircase, you can see that there's quite a lot of work to be done in here still, but we can easily jump down this tunnel, which will eventually be our laboratory, and come down along this way, and this will lead us to the Guardian Collection Room. Our collection room is a bit of a mess, I'll be honest, but very functional. You can see I take the prismarine shards out all the time, but we've got a lot of crystals. If you ever need crystals or fish, honestly, please use some fish. I should actually take some with me right now. That is so useful. And yeah, the guardians come in here and I have them on auto kill right now so that I can just collect the prismarine. But if you want, you can press this little button on the wall. I am a redstone genius, I know. And now they land in here perfectly. They take some damage from the lava above and we can kill them to get XP. I recommend closing the trap doors though because they thorns hurt. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna kill my armor for no reason. So uh, let me just turn that back, okay. We also have an area here to do some enchanting if you wanted to, and I think I've got a few, hmm. Yeah, I've got some lapis and books and an ax that I didn't use, so. There's still some supplies around down here. All right, let's go back up to the top. If you were wondering where I got the ice that I used in the item collection section down there, there's actually an iceberg biome straight this way. If you just go straight past the guardian farm, it's not even very far, you will hit icebergs. Okay, it looks like it's about time for me to sleep, so I'm gonna do that and then we will head to the squid farm. The squid farm from right here is just that way. So let me give you guys the coordinates of this section. There you go. And if we just head that direction about east, you'll hit a desert and then a savanna. And our squid farm is in the savanna. I should warn, the squid farm is really not much to look at. I built it on my own time so that we could have dark prismarine to use, but I am going to take you guys here because it's an important place if you want to play in this world. All right, and just like promised, here is our super underwhelming squid farm. I know, it, it's super impressive. I usually AFK right up there in that platform, and honestly, this area, I'm not worried about it being pretty. Purely functional only. You can see I haven't even bothered to put in a staircase because I'm, I'm a little lazy, I guess. <laughs> Honestly, it works fine with those staircase. Okay, 
So just over here through the sugar cane, we've got a little cart that picks up all of our lovely squid ink and drops it off here. We don't have any right now because I have not AFK'd the space in a while because I have some squid ink in a shulker box at the palace already. All right, and uh, here's the coordinates of this spot if you wanted them. Our home from here is just this way. And there's also a lovely acacia village right there. I think I'll probably fly home. Why not? I don't fly near enough. And look at all the lovely coral reefs. Honestly, one of the best things about this seed is the amazing coral. It's, it's just, it really is something. I adore it so much. All right, and just like promised, we are back at the palace. I will leave any other important coordinates in the description, I promise. There are only two places that are important that we didn't go to, and that would be the mesa where I do my mining, and of course, the end portal room. So I'll leave the coordinates that in the description. They're not particularly pretty, so, oh goodness. So I don't think it's necessary that we go there. Okay. I do have one more place for us to go though, and those of you who have been keeping up with our episodes know what this is. This is our appreciation hallways. So I would like to go through and thank everyone who has supported my channel, either through a membership with YouTube, or through supporting me on Patreon, or donating in a live stream, or commenting. Let's start with the commenters, because we started this last episode, this room is currently the most empty but we have cyan sp who commented in episode 24 and coco gizmo thank you guys so much for your support in the comment section and for inspiring me to keep going with this series next up we have our youtube gaming members we've got plasma arcaniax and Ferguson. thank you guys for being youtube members of this channel i appreciate your support so much it helps a lot next up we've got our patreons vegan tom j thomas m jordan d mary w josh r cookie master harrison b griffin b Cosmic Brambleclaw and Shannon M. Thank you guys for being Pearl Patreons. As our Ruby Patreons, we've got Primusen, Chris K, and Mike. Thank you so much for your support. Our Emerald Patreon stands alone, but he has a lovely block of emerald right here. Dominic D, thank you so, so much. Your support is incredible. Justin C and Finn S, thank you so much for being Sapphire Patrons. And then for our donators, we have Marius, Jenner, Ariel, Joshua, Sam, Meep, Nidrex, Synergy Studios, iFlying MC, Hyperburger, Christian, Crimlo, Italiano, Nex, Alien X, Grossy, HB, Three Hero Kids, Nate's Bait, Sky Ninja, Sir Killian, Greg, Video Games, Resky, and Twisted Liberty. If you have donated or been a Patreon or a member and you do not see your name on these walls, please reach out to me either on Discord, through my email, through my Patreon messages, in my Twitter. I don't care. There's lots of options. Please, please, please reach out because I would love to get your name on any of these sections if it belongs there. With all of that said, I think that concludes our episode 25 world tour. I hope you guys all enjoy having the download to this world. I can't wait to see what you decide to do in this world. We have a lot of work to go yet, but most of it is going to be detail work. We need to get the interior rooms, the windows, the wall details all in place. A lot of the hard work at this point is complete already. I'm super excited for the future of this world, and I hope you guys are too. Thank you so much for constantly motivating me and keeping me inspired in the comments section. You are all so amazing. Anyways, with that said, this has been episode 25, our world tour. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye!